Hello everyone, I'm Muqtadar Khan. I'm a professor at the University of Delaware and you're listening to Conversations. Today I want to reflect upon America's longest war. We have returned from Afghanistan. What does that mean? When Biden said America is back, I didn't realize he meant that America was back from Afghanistan. We won this war 10 years ago and then we lost it finally. If our goal in Afghanistan was to degrade the capacity of Al-Qaeda to kill bin Laden, then we achieved that 10 years ago. It is our inability to leave on time and our tendency to expand our goals that causes us to fail. If we had said that all we want to do is eliminate threats to America, then we won this war long ago. But if we said we would like to reform Afghanistan, we would like to make it a democracy, we want Muslims all over the world to choose democracy or autocracy uh, to end their anti-Americanism and therefore we will launch a global war on terror. If we define goals so large, so huge, so gargantuan, then the chances are that we would fail and I have a feeling that most people in America today are realizing that not only have we failed in Afghanistan but we are now tempted to ask the question was the global war on terror a mistake to begin with. When we went into Afghanistan there was Taliban there and Al-Qaeda. Now when we leave Afghanistan there is the Taliban, there is Al-Qaeda and now there is also ISIS. But what is also interesting is that the Taliban that we have left behind now is more legitimate because we negotiate with them, we talk to them. But they are also more powerful. They now have billions of dollars worth of our weapons that we left behind. And they have had a learning curve for nearly two decades. So I think the situation today in Afghanistan is far more precarious for us than it was 20 years ago because we stayed 10 years more than we should have. The region will be submerged in very ugly geopolitics. Rest assured there is not going to be peace and calm in the Afghanistan area. There are other nations there who have deep concerns with the changing geopolitics of the region. India, Iran, Russia, China, Pakistan. We are going to see geopolitical competition between these regional powers and the epicenter of that geopolitical competition will be Afghanistan. Afghanistan is not going to be at peace. We have seen what's coming. The Taliban have many enemies. The Northern Alliance has declared war on the Taliban. Those in the previous regime who have been marginalized, have lost power, have lost wealth, will definitely be against Taliban and the challenge of ISIS. Ironically, America has not left Afghanistan. We have left the ground of Afghanistan. I think we will remain in the airspace in Afghanistan for a long time. And what is also possible is that we might actually witness American drones and American aircrafts and American missiles targeting the enemies of Taliban and it will appear as if we are protecting the regime of the Taliban in Kabul from its other enemies, especially ISIS. So even though we have withdrawn from Afghanistan, it appears as if Afghanistan will not let us go. The last question that I want to raise is, what impact has this long war had on our society? Clearly, we spent too much money, more than a trillion dollars. We are in debt. Imagine if we had spent that trillion dollars on infrastructure at home. So there is a cost involved to it. But then many Americans lost their lives and many have returned home wounded, suffering from PTSD, causing a, a kind of undercurrent in the society which, which is not healthy. And the wars itself cause divisions in the society and we can see the, the, the bipartisan uh, or division in America which is getting more and more vicious, more and more vitriolic and I think this will be further uh, exacerbated in the coming elections when the two parties blame each other for the debacle in Afghanistan. I think our adventure in Afghanistan was necessary.
we had to go there. There was no way America could not respond to the threat of Al-Qaeda after 9-11. However, if we had limited our goals and come back as soon as we had eliminated the capacity of Al-Qaeda to target the U.S., then we would have been much, much better off. I think this should be a lesson to American foreign policy makers that we should not allow our hubris, our ideology to guide us. I think what we need to do is to be more humble and more careful in how big a task we take upon ourselves.